everybody, this is Tom Lanning. Well, I'm here at the D3 studio, my D3 studio here in Van Nuys. I want to say Happy New Year to you. We're just wrapping up a class and I want to introduce you to the students and show you the work that we did this week. Come on in. Everybody's working along. We're just here in the last few hours of the class. Last hour of the class, I should say. And we want to share this with you. I'll go ahead and let me interrupt you. If you're doing our detail, I want you to look right here. Give us your name and your contact information. All right. Uh, my name is Valerie Vostava. I'm from Austria, so my last name is a little harder to spell. I'm glad you spelled it out for <laughs> yeah. us. And here's her information. And that's where you can get a hold of Valerie to go ahead and get uh, her services and her beautiful work. Well, let's put this down. Mm -hmm. And oh, do you have some original references that you were using to get started? Yes. Uh, last year at the prosthetics event, uh, there was the sculpture by uh, I think his name was Simon Gamino. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the students at Gorton Studios. Right. And uh, I just fell in love with his sculpture. It was just so beautiful, and um, the shape of the face and everything. Uh, so that was the original artwork and there it is. that yeah. inspired me for. Beautiful. for my project well and i can see that what you took from that was some of the cheekbones some of the form mm -hmm. stuff and then you made it your own right. what a wonderful tone piece to jump off with thank you gabby's going to come in and get some beauty shots i want to point out some stuff that just drives me mm -hmm. crazy these just came on today and that's so beautiful we have these feminine lips but she's accentuated it by drawing it tight in there and those of course echo also this stuff which is beautiful, has great flow. I'm gonna come in and turn it a little bit. There we go, look at that profile. I love the flatness of that. Once again, the flow bringing us down into the lips, beautiful. And you got some found objects, you got some seashells. Yes. You ran out to Michael's and we got a little <laughs> bit of clay paint here. You can see some of the shell color still peeking through. She's gonna go for a second coat on that. But oh, I gotta tell you what I love, I love the eyes. Uh, big expressive eyes. I guess uh, we're hardwired when we see little babies and their big mm -hmm. eyes. We're hardwired to protect them. Uh, this is a beauty thing. This is not a baby, but those big expressive eyes. Uh, well, I just love being in the room with it. Thank and you. all of this makes me feel, oh, I love aquatic stuff. Everybody knows that. Yeah, was there something hard in the class, something that was a bummer that you were able to get through? Well, I actually Tell wanted me. to sculpt all of the seashells myself, so. Right. Uh, up until the third day, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna sculpt everything myself. But <laughs> yeah, I ended up running out to Michael's to get some seashells. Wonderful. And that saved you a lot of time. I'm yes, cheating definitely. all the time. <laughs> and I, I'm okay to cheat. But listen, you could spend an hour yeah. or two sculpting something like that. Right. There's no reason to do that. She runs out and gets found objects and brings mm. them in. I also love the flow of the tentacles, which is, well, beautiful. Let me turn this. She's still working on this. And when she's done, she says when it's done. Just before the class, we would like to do it for photos, but look at all this energy. Love that. And she's gonna continue on and we'll post pictures in the future when she's done. And we got a little bit of color back here. That's okay. I'm gonna go as slow as I can as we turn here. Gabby, can you come up around my shoulder? I don't wanna get that in, yeah. in frame. But... Well, she's beautiful. And I could certainly imagine a couple of different types of paint jobs on mm -hmm. this. Well, we can't wait to see what you do. What are you doing yeah. here? Uh, just a little bit of texture. Um, some, I don't know, veiny stuff, but right. just to break up the super right. even surface. Gonna tie it yeah. together. Yeah. Something to go from the seashells to mm -hmm. the soft skin. Well, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Well. I hope you post some paint jobs and some stuff. Uh, I do and too. you're thinking about getting it scanned, is that right? Yes, I'm gonna get it scanned because I can't take it home on the plane with me. Um, right. We're probably gonna do. Uh, my friend Chris Dombos said he's gonna uh, scan it for me, and we're probably gonna do either uh, a half scale, right? Or uh, they talked about even maybe making a mold for it. Wonderful. Uh, right. A digital mold so I can print out the mold and run it back home. Wonderful, on. wonderful. So that was an, another idea. It's if just in case I don't get it 
all done. Right. We will just scan it the way it is, and I will okay. get a mold and run it in in um, um, in clay. Okay. So and then just then keep on it. yeah, return it back home. This is something personal about me. I love that she's talking about scanning this. She can also affect the size. She could get it down to being a little tiny sculpture. Uh, I love this technology because that would drive me crazy to sculpt a little tiny version. So I love that you're having it scanned. Let me have you turn it out one more time mm -hmm. this way towards us. Oh, well that's wonderful. And uh, well, we're gonna follow you and you'll be back home uh, in Austria soon. And I just appreciate you coming out. We had a great time working with you. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful character. I love these things. And to see how I feel being in the room with them. Uh, here's, here's an amazing thing. I want to share this with you. Go ahead and say your name loud and clear to the camera. And also give us your contact information. I'm going to move this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Chase Styles. Um, my Instagram is Styles Vision. Um, it's kind of just about me and the characters that I see and my perspective on characters. Um, yeah, this is a Sasquatch I started. Cool, cool. In the cool. beginning of the class, I kind of wanted to do a Yeti Sasquatch character, so I could do different paints. I want to do one that I call On Ice. It's going to be like a more of a Yeti and a blue. Cool, blue cool. Blue white tones and stuff like that, so yeah. Yeah, right on, right on. Well, I love blue skin characters, obviously. I don't yeah, know what yeah. it is. Cool color, something about that. Now, the light that you sculpted in is just coming over his shoulder. So, I'm, Gabby, I'm going to have you come around here, mm -hmm. and we're going to turn towards the light that you were working on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you come out this way just so we can do this here. Yeah, I want to. I'm going to take some time. He just came on with the hair work today. Yeah, he's got great energy. This is in process. When he's done with it, he'll post some pictures in the future. But boy, the thing I want to tell you about. The hair is exciting and just came on today, but look at all these soft forms. The thing I love is the softness. He's looking at shadows, and you can see the shadow work that's going on here. How long have you been sculpting? Uh, just about a year. Just about a year. <laughs> well, needless to say, this is a wonderful, wonderful sculpture, and I so enjoy the shadow work. Here we were talking a little bit about Rick Baker and some of his Simeon stuff, and uh, not the power of the X, but a little upside down wise that you can see in Harry and the Hendersons, and you can see in a lot of Rick's work. We love that. We're fans of our community and the artists. We also were talking a bit about Norman Cabrera and a few of our other heroes and referencing their pictures. Can you show us some of your reference pictures? Yeah, yeah, of course. Please take a time and bring those up. Let's see what your main references were. You can bring them close up to Gabby's yeah, yeah. camera. This was a um, Sasquatch that I found from Jacqueline's beef jerky. Um, that was a makeup that was done. Um, I haven't, this is a small maquette done by Jordu. Yeah. Same thing, it's got a lot of hair flow in it as well. A lot of strong forms in there. Um, this was very important, as well as the skull structure to bring out and have a mix of kind of the simian and the uh, human form in there. Perfect. And then I think I got one more, which is this one. This was a big Yeti. I'm not sure what this was from. Right. But that's also inspiring as far as paint as well, too. Yeah, what attitude in the brow. Yeah. Really cool. Absolutely. Well, with, with good references. You know, this is how we learn. We look at the work of our heroes, we see what they did, and we see how we can emulate what they did, but then also make it our own. Uh, was there anything really difficult to deal with on this? Um, I think it was finding the balance um, of the mouth size. Right. How right. to kind of, it started off very skinny down here. Right. And decided to kind of beef that up. Right. And, um, I think it really fits a lot better now. It gives you more power. Yeah. You're leading with the jaw. As well as a nose decision. I didn't want to go completely ape with it, but right. giving it a nice human nose, but making it nice and broad as well. Right. The profile is banging. You can really see the nose there on the profile as well. And the expanding of the jaw. The first couple of days, he did have a smaller jaw. And then you came to it, you're like, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to make it bigger. And he ended up getting a larger lower lip out of the deal just by expanding the jaw. He had more canvas in the lip area and took advantage of that as well. Yeah, that was something I've never really done is uh, playing with expression. And you helped me a lot with the expression too, well, and how important that is. Well, you certainly got it. He got a lot of anger in the brow, which is fantastic. And uh, once again, with those references, 
and with introduction to new tools, a little bit of rubber tip tool, yeah, yeah. and also uh, conversations about cutting the bellies out of wrinkles, which Absolutely. comes into, uh, well, compression. Mm -hmm. The study of compression is really, uh, well, it's part of the adventure, uh, and to sit there and brainstorm. You know, it's important that we're able to brainstorm with our coworkers and our friends, and I gotta tell you, I didn't do much uh, with Chase here. We really just came over and talked a bit, and this is really all him. I showed a few tools, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it was through conversation and through talking about what was going to happen that, uh, well, I was able to contribute a little bit. But this is really his work. And Gabby, I just want you to take some beauty shots and go side to side. Mm -hmm. I do want to aim it towards the light a little bit more, so if you want to come back over here and pick up some detail shots in the face. Also, he ran out and got some eyeballs, yeah. which is always a good decision. I love teaching everybody how to sculpt eyes and what have you, but here he went in and got some great eyeballs. We got plastic over the eyeballs to protect them in the mold making, uh, but they're gorgeous. And what was the company name again? That does uh, Fourth Seal Studios for motion pictures. Fourth Seal. We, we love your work, guys, and we often go over in our classes and pick up some beautiful eyeballs uh, for this purpose. Yeah, yeah. That was the first time doing eyes and I feel like it really helps see out the character from yeah. early on too. Yeah, yeah. Well, mixed media goes yeah. a long way. Absolutely. Well, uh, once again, you're, uh, you're going to keep on going. Our class is coming to an end. We're going to take some still photos, which is uh, really important in the class. Uh, but he's going to keep on going when he goes home and he'll post some pictures. And we can't wait to see what you do. Of course, I hope that you mold it yeah, and maybe bring it to one of the trade shows. Uh, I always repeat myself, but I love it. If you mold it to do two or three different paint jobs, mm -hmm. you mentioned the blue. Absolutely. Obviously, I love that because I love the cool colors, but uh, mm -hmm. it's great to do a few paint jobs and uh, see what paint jobs your friends like. And that can kind of become the hero and you go from there. But yeah. uh, beautiful work. Thanks, Don. I appreciate you. I had a appreciate great week. You. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Right on. Come on around, Don. I think we're going to come in here. Oh, nice. Robin, I want you to come in here and I want you to look right here and give us all your contact information. Uh, hello, my name is Robin Spihar. Nice to be there. So here's my Instagram if you care to look at that stuff, and that's my email. Good, come on, Tom. Um, Great. Perfect. There you Perfect. Go. I'm going to walk in front of you for a second. And I'm also going to turn this while we're talking. Robin, tell us about your, your inspirations. Where did you start? to think about this character? Uh, I think the, the starting starting point was um, the uh, Alien 3 uh, sculpt, just the more sort of sinewy aspect of the, the Alien 3 stuff where it kind of departed a little bit from the uh, Beautiful. original, you yeah. know, more kind of hosey looking kind of Giger tube stuff. Wonderful. Because um, Wonderful. all my work up until this point tends to be a little rigid and, and not terribly sinewy. So the what? first references I think were the, the behind the scenes uh, Studio ADI. Sculpt sure. stuff, the you know the wet clay uh, figure, the beautiful thing that they did there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then looking at um, <laughs> a couple other you know super duper talented uh, sculptors out there. Yeah, yeah. You know the kind of stuff that you look at that is both inspiring and discouraging at the same time. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> so incredibly feeling. good, but yeah. those guys would be. Um, and this uh, is this is a great note to everybody out there. Uh, the the people that are better than us, we use for inspiration. It's like food for us. We see their work and it helps our work and informs us. Um, there's always going to be amazing artists coming out and we draw inspiration from them. Uh, can we do what they do? Yes, we can. Absolutely we can by emulating our heroes and studying. And in this case, God, I just love this angle. I'm going to turn this in here. Stay right there, Gabby. Look at the hard part. Look at the bone part and how we go to a different topography. Here, this is more soft, sinewy, that leads into kind of, a, I want to say, a brain bud, if you will. That's mm -hmm. probably it. not the greatest, but this stuff is what Robin came on with. I want to tell you, I didn't work with Robin that much. He's an experienced sculptor, <laughs> and he came in and elevated the class with his experience, but I just want you to hang and linger on this stuff. Mm -hmm. and it didn't all happen in one fell swoop. Uh, it's my feeling that he found cool stretching, great energy in the tendon poles, and then through sweetening and staying with the forms and working them, I noticed that you had breakthroughs. Yeah. The, some of the breakthroughs literally being breakthroughs on the sides yeah. of the tendon, literally. And that stuff is just so exciting. Also about halfway through the sculpture, if you'll allow me, he had such great, such great tension here in the neck and it was such a great design element that I, I knew he could pick it up in another direction, in another way, in another area, and so he did it in here. 
and those tendons pull out and stretch to reach out to this carapace out here. Man, I love that. Let me give you a full profile. And this is your first time working in the wet clay. I yeah, can yeah. Ask for your first, opinions first on wet. that. Yeah, I love it. Um, I was a little apprehensive. No, not necessarily apprehensive. I knew it was great stuff to watch through. A lot of people love it. Yeah, yeah. But I, um, I was, you know, I'm so used to working in, in um, you know, kind of waxes like a CX5 or a monster clay. Sure, um, sure. That it was, uh, you know, I was like, oh, I wonder how that'll go. Um, but yeah, wonderful stuff. I, I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. He's a believer. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a convert. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Yeah. Well, this is, once again, everybody, it's a, such an intuitive clay, and the wet clay is inexpensive uh, as well, which makes it wonderful, but, uh, well, everybody knows this is my favorite clay. I love this stuff. The interface is fantastic, much like a video game. you got a controller, you're controlling some little character on a TV. This is a weird analogy, but this clay is so smooth and creamy and moves so fast, your interface is fantastic. Uh, needless to say, and of course, when it dries out, once it started to dry out, Robin was able to come in and do more stuff on the bone. You see little pleats that run around the bone here. He needed it for, to, for it to dry up a little bit and leather up, which is a common thing among sculptors. We know that the magic time with this kind of clay comes when it leathers up and hardens up, and then it starts to behave more like an oil-based clay. And you can come in and do some really fine, fine detail. Well. I love it. He's going to take this home and he's going to continue yeah, on. Yeah. And uh, when you go ahead, yeah. I was just going to say I should probably mention the other references as well. Please, uh, I yeah, want you to. Yeah, yeah. The, I want um, you to. Come other on, great here. artists um, that, that inspired me to this work was um, uh, Amilcar Aldana Fong, uh, who yeah. is just absolutely incredible. I can show you the, the pictures that we sort of looked at because he has such amazing textures. Um, you can find him on Instagram. Where's my pictures? Oh, take your so time. Nervous. No, no, take I'm your nervous. time. There's a camera looking at me. Uh, and when you got it, bring it right up to you. Here we go. Come There's on. Sort of, oh, there you go. You can see who he is. So if you want to follow that incredible artist, you can. But you know, he does these just amazing, amazing textures. textures. He could make a he could make a sphere look yeah. amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. What he would do to a just, or he could take a cube and make you know blow your mind with it. Love it. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, here's another piece of his. This is a digital sculpture of his. Can you believe it? Like, look at these textures. It's just. He's on a completely. He's on another. Mind boggling. He's on another planet. Yeah, mind boggling. Um, and then I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce uh, Tomek's last name, but there's an absolute rock star as well. Tomek. Sure, sure. Radiswick, I think, is how you say his last name. We'll, we'll here's look a, it up. Here's yeah. a piece of his. That, that's his him as well. But just looking at these wonderful sort of sinews that he has going on. Beautiful. And I never really, if you look at my stuff on Instagram, up until this point, it tends to be very rigid. I mean, still very flowy and got all these sure. sort of swirly things, but nothing really had that. That uh, that sinewy thing to it. Oh, and of, and of course, last but but um, not least, a um, sure the skull of a, uh, a giraffe. I was just we were, Wonderful. we were trying to figure out. I was yep. trying. What should I do? And I just yep. randomly typed in giraffe skull. Yep. And I was really like thrilled with the way this sort of weird. Yeah. I mean, are those teeth? Up? I, I got to research and find out. Yeah, it looks like yeah, it does in fact have those teeth right there. Those right? teeth. Like, yeah. Teeth. Yep. Maybe the yep. tongue comes out or something and pulls. You know, it snips off. Maybe the leaves with these ones. Yep. yep. Pulls them in with its tongue or something and grinds them up here. Yep. I don't and know. It, and it anyway. just it just looks otherworldly, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. It just, looks. Once again, taking from nature and reference is a superpower for all of us. Yeah, yeah. that's gorgeous. Yeah. I love so it. And the wickedness go. of those teeth, boom, right here. I love it. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. So there you go. Well, once again, brother, it was great having you here. Absolutely. You elevated the class having you here. Oh, and having you as an example is just fantastic. Yeah, it's thrilling. I was, this is like, this will be a week that I will, will, will never forget. Oh, yeah, right it's on. just right really mind-boggling. Well, I appreciate it. times. You. Everybody follow him, and we can't wait to see what you sculpt next. Nice one. Right Thanks, on. Don. Right on, right on, right on. Great. Come Thank on around right here. Thank you. Oh, I want you to look right over here. Give us your name and contact information Hi. loud and bright. My name is Aura Madrigal, Aura A. Madrigal, spelled just like that, Aura Alejandra. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and my website is my name. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. 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 Well now, Aura, I have to tell you, uh, took my class last year, and she came in and she did a likeness sculpture of an established character that was very labor intensive because it was reproduction. And this time around, I got a compliment her. Uh, she wanted to get more into expression and more into emotion, which is a superpower for us. And so I want you to turn this character out. Go ahead and turn it this way a little bit. Oh, fantastic. 
Yeah, Gabby's going to come around. And show us your references. Show us your jump off point and the things that inspired you. So I knew I wanted to do something old age sure. um, because I was worried about wrinkles. Um, I feel like every time, or lots of times when we go into sculpt wrinkles, um, at least in my experience, they can be get kind of mask-like and woody, so you really have to right. like, uh, right. burnish them down. Sure. And so I wanted a, a challenge in that way. Um, and Wrinkles, also, yeah. And also just, um, I wanted to focus a lot on um, personality, and yeah. as Don said, expression, yeah. and finding a character um, within the sculpture. Right, um, right. So I really wanted to focus on like happiness and joy. Yeah, so. yeah, and there's a lot in here. Look at this dear face. Oh, and here I'm getting a lot of laughter and a lot of joy, and that's what she brought into here. At least that's how I perceive it. This to me looks like laughter and joy. You can see that she used this reference as a little bit of a note for finding the mouth, and that came out very successful. And of course, all of these little lines. I encouraged Aura to be loose and to stay with the reference as a push-off point, but also to take her own ideas and just bring that in. And she did that very successfully. And then you also found costume. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, uh, yeah. So, tell us about that. Well, so I, um, I, I do costumes, and so I have a little bit of experience drawing costumes, but Great. it was really awesome to sculpt them because I've never, I've, uh, I don't have, I don't have too much experience sculpting right. at all, and so uh, now you do. I just have, I just had a ton of fun, you know, finding um, different uh, fabric textures and Great. Great. making distinctions between the layers. Great, um, and I can see where you pushed in a little burlap into the clay which is a wonderful thing to do, go up to the hat. And also on the lapel, she's used a little bit of a, a texture stamp, if you will, and as much as she went and got some, some burlap here and was able to push that into the sculpture in different places. You can see it here in the hat. I love that she took a chunk out and showed some age there in the, in the hobo hat, if you will. And look, she's got wild eyebrows too. I love the one tooth. Yeah, sculpting the hair was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and also it's this compression here. This compression here is what gives me the laugh, the laugh feeling. And also the arc to the mouth. Well, you know this, I'm telling you stuff you know. Look at the bow tie, flower. That's a found object that she used a little clay paint on. And once again, we're back to a little bit of her lap, texture pushed in. Well, once again, emotion. Not everybody can do emotion. And so to set yourself some goals to be able to sculpt emotional things is fantastic. Uh, I've had a great time doing it. And it's just wonderful because you have this inanimate block of clay and to get it to wake up and do something and have emotion and carry that to your audience is just fantastic. Well, I can't wait to see it. Now, last time you did a, a dead on likeness. Now mm -hmm. you've done this. Uh, we can't wait to see what you do next. <laughs> And I'm just so happy to have you here again. Thank, Thank you for coming much. again. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm yeah. going to have you come out this way. Thank you. Thank you. Come on over here. Gabby, come on over here. And let me have you look here and give us your full information. I am Leandra France. There you it's are. It's IG, Leandra France Makeup. Perfect. And website. Perfect. Wonderful. Can you bring up your reference for us? Sure, you can. I'm going to come over and turn this, and then I'm going to step out of the way. Sure. So my reference yeah. with the Mer people from Harry Potter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Show that. Beautiful. Wonderful. Which is a great choice. Aquatic creatures, mm -hmm. if you don't mind me talking about yeah, this. No um, well, Doug Jones, uh, uh, Abe Sapien in The Shape of Water. Mm -hmm. Every kind of, um, I love aquatic creatures and I know you do too. To me, this is very aquatic. This is something that's in the, in the ocean and has a beautiful, mind and life there. I just love this energy. I want you all to know this came on today. And I love her styling that. The main intensity is in the eyes. And she went for it. To me, this is a little bit of a frog eye, mm -hmm. if you will. Once again, staying aquatic. And also here, we have another kind of a fish kind of thing. In that I've seen that, or I've seen that on fish. And also, she pulled it from the reference as well. But I love that you took the reference and you used it as a tone. Mm -hmm. And then you pushed on through and you got your own original stuff, yes. which I love. I gotta turn it to show the ears. <laughs> Let's go 
this way. Look at this. Coming off the jowl, the fishy jowl of the mouth, we come in here and she keeps the flow of the ear. We got a little bit of rake marks here to symbolize uh, what to me is like the fins that you see on the back of a fish. It's great storytelling here. It goes up into the hair. This is wonderful. We talked a little bit, and then she came on so strong with this. We talked a little bit about uh, scales and uh, not necessarily reptile stuff, but I showed her a little bit more of a reptile style as opposed to a repetitive fish scale because I find that more exciting. And she got a hold of it and ran with it. Let me turn it this way. Look at that ear. See? Look at the flow jumping off here and all of this energy created by the tendrils of the hair is fantastic. I'm going to turn it all the way around. Now, look what she's got going on back here. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. I love it. I'm going to keep going around. That's heavy, too. Mm, yes. We don't hold you back in our <laughs> classes here. We want to indulge you. And so, plenty of play. That's not a big deal at all. And also, I do love the sharpness of the teeth. For me, this is piranha uh, yes. style. Uh, and also, some, some of these weird fish that you find, the deep benthic ocean fish, they tend to have these little sharp little teeth that are also translucent. Of course, we're in an opaque clay here, but to me, in my mind, when I'm with this creature, I see those as being like a clear plastic kind of tooth, uh, something you could almost see through. And uh, it's funny, this, this has become a little Medusa-like. Yes. And I keep waiting to see like some little head like come out and <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, was there anything that was, was difficult in this? Um, um, no. or, or easy? What was, what was easy? What was fun to do? What was fun um, was the scales and the teeth. I really had a good time doing this. So, um, this is the only, this is my third piece I have ever Great. created. So <laughs> I'm pretty new at yeah. this and yeah. I really appreciate this class because I learned a lot. And well, I appreciate you. I'm taking a run with what I know. Well, if you saw my third sculpture, you'd be like, oh my gosh. Uh, you have no fear of clay and you have a great taste and we can't wait to see what you do in the future. And I hope you got some good tool use. Yes here, how to hold the tool, and uh, I know we, we got into the rubber tip tool quite a bit, and that's what she was using to soften, it, soften the forms around the eyes, also get softer shadows down in the valleys, and uh, well, I had a pleasure working right, with you. Thank so you so much. That you're here. My pleasure. Oh, great. Wonderful. Well, come on over here. You know, usually I have a bunch of stuff to say. Uh, I just want to say thank you to our Facebook audience for being so supportive to our, our audience. And most importantly, I want to thank the students for coming from all over the world uh, to take part in this class. Uh, this is my great joy. I'm sure I'm going to remember this forever. Uh, thank you guys. You guys are the best, and you made this week happen. As they say, the proof is in the pudding, and in this case, the proof is on the table. Uh, these folks did some wonderful work, and I want you to join us in the next couple of weeks when they post pictures of their work to congratulate them and support them as they move on into their artistic adventures. Uh, we have a class coming up. Look in the description for next month's class that's going to be here. And, uh, well, once again, we appreciate you, and thank you for tuning in. Take care.